Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 190 of Love at First Scent, with me, Percy Lays, coming to you today live from YouTube. And the subject of this particular review video is going to be this new release from Tom Ford, Soleil Brûlant. But I need to go onto the tablet, as per usual, to make sure that everything is coming through loud and clear, and to see who gets the first comment. David, you get it this time, saying, glad to have caught this live, and you, hello again, says Yura. Whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. I try to get round to them uh, in 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 due course, usually within about a day of you leaving them. And everybody's back. Lalwa's here. Angelina is saying hello. I haven't seen you on one of these for a while. Uh, Rich Mitch is here as well. Rachel is saying hi. Hello from Houston, says Eric. Sylvia saying hello as well. Thank you very much to all of you for tuning in. And by the way, for the benefit of those of you watching live, don't forget that tomorrow uh roundabout so that's going to be tuesday 4th of may roundabout this time 4 p.m uk time i'm going to be joined live again for another video with max 40 where we're going to be doing a top 10 of something i'm not going to reveal just what yet david says i smelt this and i didn't like it oh that's a shame because i i was taken with this one so this is the latest uh private blend but as far as i know this is a uh limited edition it's, it's it's very hard showing these sorts of reflective bottles to you because the light messes up with the white balance on the camera. But this is Soleil Brûlant from Tom Ford, uh, the, the latest in the Soleil range, and as far as I know, um, a limited edition. Now, Tom Ford, as you all know, as a brand just releases so many perfumes, you could perhaps say um, too many. It's almost as though um, the creative forces at, at, at the brand, and, and I'm sure Tom Ford himself still has quite a lot to do with, with the perfumes, I, I'd imagine he has a lot to do with the production of the perfumes. It's almost like they sort of throw all of these things out and say, yes, let's release some of these, let's release some of those, and then let's see which ones strike a chord with, uh, with the buying public, and then we'll sort of keep those and maybe discontinue the rest, and we'll have some limited editions here. Like, for instance, they've done some lighter versions of some scents from a few years ago unless i'm mistaken so i think there's now a lighter version of jasmin rouge there's a lighter version of one of the green scents um you'll find all of this information um on the net is the bottle hot says you yeah the bottle is so hot i actually feel myself melting what do you mean is the bottle hot but <laughs> so so i suppose if where i was going with that is that because they release so many it, it, it's kind of inevitable that you're not going to end up liking every single one. And it's inevitable that you're not going to consider um, every single one to be all that great. Um, so it, it, it's a bit sort of up and down. So, for instance, just before this, we had the Tubero, Tuberose New, with which I wasn't especially taken. Oh, Brûlant Hot. Yes, OK, I get it. Yeah, the, the bottle's really hot. I can't touch it now. But this one I thought was OK. And I wasn't especially expecting to uh, be overly impressed with Lost Cherry. But actually, I thought it was all right. Bitter Peach is the one from the most recent ones that, that, that I don't know a huge amount about. I need to ch I need to check that one out. So why did I like this? Uh, let's have a spray. Um, for one thing, I appreciate the fact that it doesn't have a silly name. I think Tom Ford, whoever chooses the, his names, you know, whether whether it is him himself, I, I do wish they wouldn't sort of go down the, 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 the juvenile route that he seems to have um, enjoyed going down for the last few years. Um, I heard that it has a prominent honey accord. Is that right? Well, honey does absolutely feature in this scent. I was not impressed by Bitter Peach, says all factive stories, but that's bound to happen with a, with a brand like Tom Ford, isn't it? You know, we'll like some of the other ones because there are so many. Um, the honey is strong on that one, says David. Now, yeah, see, I, I do still like this because, because I think it, it, it fits. The name started to go into Killian territory, says Rich Mitch. You're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. I don't know exactly what the concept behind this perfume was. I've got a little bit of press blurb that I can share with you in a moment. But the fact that it's called Burnt Sun, Roasted Sun, the fact that it's in a gold bottle, um, all ties in with how it smells. And I personally am impressed um, and sort of give pats off to the brand when they can make um, things come together 
not just in a conceptual sense, but also make the concept tie in with the with the olfactory side of things. So what you're getting is intriguingly a, a, a kind of roasted coffee note. Um, that's the kind of note that always comes out much more strongly on skin. So do try this on skin if you get a chance to. Do you smell a latex feel, says David, or crackerjack popcorn? I can't say that I did, but there could be a kind of slight suggestion of melting plastic. Um, and then you get this quite strong honeyed feel, and it all seems to be molten lava and sun rays coming down onto the surface of the planet. And and one thing that I got the first time I sprayed this was a, a, a James Bond title sequence, those sort of dubious James Bond title sequences with the, with the semi-clad women either covered in gold paint or silver paint or, or, or all in black, you know, writhing with their silhouettes as some song or other plays. It's got that kind of very, very slinky, sensual, slightly wrong feel to it, which which can actually be really, really right in a perfume. Um, and, and, and a kind of roasted nut quality as well, which ties in with the, with the coffee. And maybe the idea was to try to um, put in as many olfactory references to heat as possible and and sun beating off skin, all of those sorts of ideas, which is maybe where the um, the coffee comes into it. Um, Richmish says, I was quite taken with the new signature Costa Azura. I get a slightly mentholated vibe. See, again, that was one of the ones that I wasn't crazy about because that actually was, was one of the... Um, private blend colognes, wasn't it? And now it's come out as a signature. Yura says, do we have any idea as to who the perfumer is? I know Tom Ford is not Frederick Mal, but anyone heard anything through the grapevine? The, the information will probably come out eventually. I personally think it's such a shame that as a brand, they don't release the names of the perfumers. Of all people, I would have thought that Tom Ford would be the kind of person who would want to give credit to the perfumers, but but no. Sounds like Angel Muse, says Pregez. Mm. The Angel Muse was definitely sweeter, definitely sweeter. I mean, even though there is a honey note here, honey has all sorts of other facets to it as well, doesn't it? The sort of hay-like quality, the tobacco quality. Um, nothing like Angel Muse, says David. Okay, right, let's see what the brand themselves say. So as I say, very, very, very brief little blurb. It says, inspired by your own private summer. Did you know that it was inspired by your own private summer? The sun blazing over private islands. The limited edition Tom Ford Soleil Summer 2021 collection magnetizes with innovative new experiences of solar gold. Yes, OK. And we have a quote from Mr. Ford himself. The warmth of amber and mix of florals render this fragrance original. Soleil Brûlant is addictive, the boldest version of Soleil, okay? Um, an opulent golden sun, a secluded island escape, Soleil Brûlant, the third expression in the Soleil franchise, releases sun-kissed florals warmed by amber, conjuring a blazing encounter between gilded rays and bare skin. Actually, the whole sun and skin thing, I, I, I completely am going along with that. I completely agree. The floral oriental scent is an invitation to an uninhibited summer. Maybe not just yet. Let's practice a little bit of distancing for a bit longer. Where high shine solar brilliance mingles with the intense freshness of mandarin and bergamot. Spicy pink peppercorn. Yeah, OK. Gives way to an ornate and regal floral heart of jasmine sandback, tuberose and orange flower absolutes. I mean, now that they're mentioning the... They're very clean white florals, though, okay? Um, as the sun and body embrace, and the body melts in the heat of the sun, and the, the story ends there, the warmth of decadent amber intensified by resins, woods, and black honey nectar exudes a seductive vapour. Invigorating coffee arabica and tonka bean awaken the extravagant smokiness of incense, vetiver, and leather. Um... And there is a leatheriness to it as well. It, I, I think it works. I, I think, I think as a kind of 
let's just swoon away onto a, a sun lounger somewhere and let's just let the, the sun infuse us with slowness. I think it works. The 50 mil flacon is designed in a metallic golden hue inspired by brilliant sun rays, etc, etc. The grand 250 mil decanter features the same evocative use of gold. Well, you don't need to know about that. I can see a few comments flashing here. So what are all of you saying? Uh, a spray of this, says Yura, and you feel like the gold haired Richard Branson on his private Caribbean and private island for a day. Uh, can we think of a better reference? Maybe not. I don't know. David says, I still prefer Soleil Neige. OK, if I had to choose one Soleil, not a fan of the Soleil line in general. Um, I read somewhere the nose behind it is Daniela Andrie, says my curated life. Oh, where'd you get that from? It. I mean, it, it could be a Givaudan release. Absolutely, it could. Brulon made me think of burnt sugar like creme brulee, says Nathan Thomas. Maybe, but not in a sticky, juvenile, dippy way at all. Uh, Richmond says, uh, Jacobetti has done quite a few Tom Fords. Olivia Jacobetti, really? I, I didn't think... And Ashfaq is saying, hello, Papa Persilaise. And Ashfaq is going to get himself banned from the channel for saying that. Um, Pragesa says, in my mind, it creates the image of a Riyadh, a traditional Moroccan house. Does it make me think of Morocco? Tom Ford did a very good um, Morocco-inspired scent a few years ago called Bois Marocain, right? Which then came back as one of the sort of um, limited edition re-releases. I really did like that one. To me, Morocco's got to be cedar. Um, whereas this is... The, the, what makes this interesting for me and what makes this worth checking out is that contrast between the, the heated coffee notes and those... Slightly trashier florals. Maybe that's the word I've been avoiding here. It's 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 delightfully trashy. Um, you started it, not me. Says no, I did not. It was Max Forty who started that. I'm not taking taking credit for that. Um, and Hamlet says just tried Soleil Blanc. Must say I'm not a fan. Um, I think we need to leave that one there. I will report back with a blotter update. And if you're sticking around for uh, a few more minutes, we will come back with a third and final video for today. So see you in a few minutes. Thanks for watching this one.